Okay, I've tried uploading a few different videos now, but I think this one's actually going up. I just could not decide what I wanted to go with. Today, I will be re reviewing a certain weapon for self-defense, which I believe is the king of self-defense weapons. What am I referring to? The stick. <laughs> okay. The stick. So, why do I think the stick is the king of self-defense? Well, it's got the mass and the rigid form to hit way harder than your bare hands. It also gives you a range advantage. It can hit hard. Not as hard as like a sword or anything with any sort of a blade, honestly. Or a weapon that's more forward hit. Or a gun, of course. Okay, a pistol is probably the best for self-defense. But, that's in stopping power. I honestly think to defend yourself, the stick is better. Why do I think the stick is better than a gun? The whole, you have to conceal a gun. You don't have to conceal a stick. Have you ever seen people... I mean, the sticks are smaller than this, but have you ever seen people on a just leaning on a pole like this? Or like this? It's a walking stick. It has stick in the name. <laughs> Shadowversity talked about this. The stick is amazing for self-defense. So it gives you all the extra damage you need. And keep in mind, the whole point of a self-defense weapon is not to do damage, it's to prevent damage to yourself. If you're going to be defending yourself with the weapon, not fighting, that actually hurt, I smacked myself in the elbow. Um... If what you're trying to do is defend yourself, not hurt your foe, the best way to do this is to avoid confrontation. What's the best way to avoid confrontation? There's multiple sayings. Stand tall and carry a big stick. The best weapon is the one you never have to fire. <laughs> the pen is mightier than the sword. No, no matter where you go to get your information, okay, every reliable source is going to say the best way to defend yourself is to... Be able to avoid conflict. So making yourself intimidating is the best self-defense weapon. Making it so you're, they're not going to want to attack you. That is how you defend yourself most effectively. And at the same time... So... Let's say you've got a walking stick, okay? People are going to be less likely to want to attack you. But, if you come across someone royally stupid or just doesn't care... See how quickly I can pull that out? And here's the thing. This is bigger than a walking stick. 
which you don't have to conceal a walking stick. It's a fashion statement. It's also a tool for certain disabled people. I don't like that term, but that's what they call it. I'm disabled. I have autism and ADHD, but I don't need a walking stick. Certain disabilities do require it. But it's also a fashion statement. You can use a walking stick. You can carry a walking stick no matter what. Or a cane. Both serve the same purpose. The stick is a controllable weapon. And if it has the right... Um, university, like the word girth, but I'm just going to use the word mass. If you have a stick with proper mass... You're going to hit hard. And what you want to do with your self-defense weapon is not get it stuck in your opponent. That's why I believe blunt will always be better than sharp for self-defense. You knock your opponent to the ground. You run. If you have to fight. But the best way to defend yourself is to not have to fight. I can not stress that enough. If someone comes at you with a knife and you're cornered, okay, so someone corners you, they come after you with a knife. Book it. Done. And that's a very unlikely situation. You're much less likely to get attacked by someone with a concealed weapon that's not going to have as much range if you're carrying a big stick. The other thing is, if you don't have a self-defense weapon, no matter where you go, you can find a stick. A stick. Dick. They fall off trees. Perfect self-defense weapon. This one's a bit big to qualify as a walking stick or a cane. I mean, this is a regular Joe stack. I can't really move this in too many ways because the TV's right there. But you see, so you can move the thing pretty quick. See how quickly I'm moving this with control? Okay, to show how controlled this is, I'm going to trace what I'm going to do first, and then I'm going to show you it quickly. So, okay. Pretty darn close. So, controllable. Has the mass to hit hard. Take your attacker off their feet. So you can book it. You don't try to do as much damage as possible to defend yourself. You try to hit and run. That's it. Hit and run. Hit and run. A good hit over the head is going to knock most people's rights out. Then you run. If they're still standing trying to attack you, you give them another hit. You hit until you have an opening and then you run. If they have a gun, most idiots that attack you with a gun are going to, one, not really be too good at hitting you. From a distance. And. Um, they kind of have to reach their gun. So. If you knock them to the ground. Kick their gun away. And then run. You're way more likely. To get away. Than if. You 
you try to just fight them. Because here's the thing. If you just keep bashing and bashing and bashing until you're the one that committed the unspeakable act. Really what you're doing is you're asking for the police to arrest you. Okay? You're a lot more likely to be able to plead self-defense if you just whack and run. Okay? Who do you think is the one that's going to be blamed for being the attacker? The guy who is knocked to the ground that had a gun... Or the guy carrying a big stick. Okay, so if someone is trying to attack you, what they're going to focus on is damage. If someone is threatening you with a weapon, Changes are they don't care what happens to you. That's the whole point. So you bang, knock them to the ground. If they have a gun, kick it away. That's the other thing. You don't want to pick up the gun and throw it away. One that could set it off. And you could shoot yourself in the foot. Two, you mess with the fingerprints. <laughs> okay, so you want this guy to go to prison so he can't hurt anyone ever again. Alright? And so you're safe from having to deal with him again. So the best way to defend yourself... Say you get cornered and you have to fight your way out. Okay? Say they push you into an alley. For it. This is completely hypothetical. This is not a likely situation. But I need some kind of an example. Okay? Say they corner you. They're holding a gun to you at point blank range. And you have a walking stick. Run. Call the cops when you're into safety. Tell them where you got attacked. Hopefully they get there in time to apprehend them. When they see a guy knocked to the ground, which... A good hit from a big stick will likely leave someone unconscious. The, the guy with the loaded gun unconscious in the alleyway is likely going to jail. Not some guy walking down the street with a walking stick. It's just, so, the point of a self-defense weapon is self-protection, not harming your attacker. You're not the law. Don't try to deliver their punishment for them. Okay, let the police do that. The police can give them fair punishment, and you're a lot less likely to be punished for defending yourself if you knock someone out and run. The other thing is, a lot of like, say, muggers or other undesirables that would attack you are going to have their face covered. Why does this matter? 
when the police see this guy unconscious on the ground with his face covered in public, that also has a gun laying next to them with their handprint on it. A loaded gun. Or a knife with their handprint on it. Who do you think is going to jail? <laughs> the face covering is because they're trying to avoid being arrested. They're trying to avoid being identified. The police know this. So... To protect yourself, you want to be non-lethal. You're a lot less likely to get in trouble for a non-lethal blow to the head and run away. Than a lethal weapon. So I truly believe the gun is not the perfect self defense weapon. It's the perfect weapon these days, but not self defense weapon. Especially because you have to conceal a gun, you don't have to conceal. A stick. You don't have to conceal something that's just a little bit shorter than this. You can get walking sticks with similar girth to this. Just not quite as long. And then you can just walk around with something that will be considered a fashion statement or a disability tool. You can just Boom. And then if you get attacked, run. And here's the thing. A stick is kind of the cheapest self-defense tool you can get. So if you can, drop the stick and run. If you have to hit someone, run, whether it means drop the stick or not. You're not losing much. Perfect self-defense tool. Expendable, because it's, well, cheap. Unlike a gun, which costs money per shot, and the cheaper guns are like $200, $300. A stick can be like anywhere from zero to, if it's a metal walking stick sort of thing, like $15, $20. I think. I don't know for sure. That's just me trying to use logic. But to defend yourself. Walking stick. Better than the gun. Better than the knife. Now you may be wondering, well, if a stick is so good for defense, why not nunchucks? There are a multitude of reasons why the nunchucks are a bad self-defense weapon. One, they're a bad weapon, period. This is going to do about as much damage and have more range. Even if the nunchucks have similar mass and length, they're going to have less range because of the core and more often than not do less damage because they're not fully rigid. They're not getting the full force of the Strike. The 
it's not going to hit any harder. It's going to have less range. And it can bounce back and hit you in the face. If it hits you in the nose, you're likely going to be more out of commission than your attacker. You have to conceal nunchucks. They're illegal in most countries. You know what's not illegal anywhere? A walking stick. A walking stick is legal anywhere. I think. Anyways, you don't have to conceal it, so you're intimidating to those that might try to attack you. It hits hard if it has proper mass. A good hit over the head, and you can usually run away at that point. The other thing is, did you ever think about what one thing all weapons resemble in some way? The cannonball. It's a weaponized stick. The sword is sort of like a sharp stick. The bow is a stick with a string on it. The gun has no meal. Um... <laughs> Uh, connection to a stick. The staff. It's a long stick. The spear. It's a stick with a spike on the end. The nunchucks. It's a stick cut in half attached by a cord. I've got more. <laughs> the stick is the base of most great weapons. When you think about all the advantages a stick has to really any other weapon you could carry for self-defense, tell me now in the comments, what do you think the best um, so the defense weapon is. I think it's the stick. I really do think it's the stick. If you have different thoughts, tell me in the comments. If you think there's something else that's better than the stick in self-defense, tell me in the comments and tell me why. Because I can then logically say whether or not I agree with your statement. Also, if you want to send this video to Shadowversity, if you, if you want to see what he thinks of this, go ahead. Shadowversity said the same things about the stick. <laughs> okay. I mean, I said it in a different way. But for the most part, we said the same thing. The other thing is... You guys have heard of the staff, right? You know what the staff is, right? It's a big stick. That's all a staff is. The staff is literally a big stick. And that is a weapon. Historical, I believe so. I believe it's just a martial arts weapon, but I suppose it could have been used on the battlefield. I don't really know why you would use it, because the spear... It's basically the same with a spike on the end, but however, practicality, walking stick, it's a thing, so not exactly hard to carry.
walking sticks are legal pretty much anywhere. You can buy them at most general stores, I believe. So, doesn't really matter where you live, you can get a walking stick. It can be considered a disability tool or a fashion statement, so... It's allowed anywhere, really, for anyone. They're super easy to get a hold of. They hit hard. The walking stick and a cane, these hit hard. Gonna have a range advantage against most melee weapons someone could come after you with in an alley way. Or any situation where you're cornered, which would be the situation when you would have to hit them. If they come after you with a gun, guess what? Most people that come after you with a gun are going to stick it out like this. Do you know why you never hold out your arm like this with a weapon? Right out of their hand. You pull out the gun from their hand. They can't shoot you. You're not messing with the fingerprints by touching the barrel. As long as you don't touch the handle. And then after you throw the gun away, you whack them. And you run. Because walking sticks are usable in one hand. And you don't have to pull it out from a concealed spot. You're going to be able to draw it. Easily. And you're going to have that hand available to pull away a gun. Before they get in close enough with like a knife. To hurt you. You can bop them over the head and run. When you just get down to the bare minimum facts of what you need for self-defense and what the stick can do. Perfect self-defense weapon. The stick is perfect for self-defense. The stick in self-defense is like steel for blacksmithing. It's the perfect thing. <laughs> it doesn't hit as hard as most weapons you could have, but a lot of weapons are going to be illegal. A lot of those weapons will be illegal. The stick shouldn't ever be illegal because walking sticks. The walking stick is a self-defense weapon as well. As a walking stick. So, this video was not a video I just did for fun. This was a video to tell people the best way to defend themselves. So I understand I'm talking about weaponry. This could get demonetized. And this is the last video of this sort I'm doing for a while. But I really wanted to cover this because it's an important topic. So please, YouTube. When you or your bots check this video to, demon to choose whether or not to demonetize it. If you ever do. Sometimes it just doesn't happen. Um... Note, I am doing this to help people understand the best way to keep themselves safe. 
logically. Okay, from a logical standpoint, I am trying to tell people how to protect themselves. I'm not trying to scare anyone. I'm not trying to do any of that. And I am specifically talking about how, what you can do in self-defense. The fact of the matter is, this is a harsh world. People need to know how to defend themselves. And again, stick, best self-defense weapon. But the best strategy to defend yourself in any situation is to run away. The only time you would use a self-defense weapon is when you can't run to enable yourself to run away. That is what a self-defense weapon is for. Not to hurt someone. The fact of the matter is, though, hurting someone in a situation where you can't just run away is the best way to defend yourself. That is the essence of self-defense. Self-defense means exactly what it what the term is to defend one's self. Not do harm. So, for my outro, I want to say answer this question in the comments. What do you believe the best self defense tool is after seeing this video? Tell me why, if you disagree with me, or even if you agree with me. If you think I am wrong and you want to tell someone to debunk this video, I got three really good YouTubers for you. Metatron, Skullagrim, Shadowversity. Shadowversity is an expert on weapons. Okay, he's a weapons expert. And he said the stick is a great self-defense weapon. So, yeah. If you feel this video is wrong and needs to be debunked, Go ahead, okay? I just gave you three really good YouTubers that know what they're talking about. Any of the big weapons channels are, well, not like Demolition Ranch, the gun channels, but any melee weapons channel like the community of the sword. Any of those guys are going to know whether what I am saying is faulty or true. So. Go ahead. Ask any YouTuber 
you want to debunk this. But here's the thing. If I can't for any reason at all confirm that they know what the heck they're talking about, I'm not going to listen to them. It has to be someone with ethos, if I'm going to listen. Some random YouTuber no one's ever heard of that has, what, 60 subscribers? I'm in the same position. Like, I don't believe anyone to believe me. At all. Go ahead. Tell anyone that's... Anyone that has evidence of credibility, go ahead and tell them.